Saturday morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hit the like button and help a brother out. It definitely helps the algorithm and helps us keep spreading the word. You know, I got up this morning, cooked breakfast for everybody and things, and it's the day after Thanksgiving. We had oh, we had a feast last night on the Commanders. You know, do 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 you still want them Cowboys? Do you still want them boys? Do you still want them Cowboys? Excuse me, Dallas. You still want Dallas? I don't think you do. Jack Del Rio fired this morning, and uh, things are looking pretty rough right now for Commanders and their fan base. And Dak Prescott. Now, granted. Other teams have not played yet this morning. But people are waking up finding out that at the moment, Dak Prescott leads the NFL in touchdown passes with 23. And he's got two rushing touchdowns on top of it. So that's 25 touchdowns. And I believe he's at 3,000 yards right now, or close to 3,000 yards, with still six more games to play. And that's kind of amazing when you think that he sat out, I think, six fourth quarters. Yeah. So, for those out there saying he's just padding the stats, he ain't been getting the opportunities to really pad those stats. But be that as it may, I am one who people will say, you are just a DAC defender. You're just a DAC lover. DAC can't do anything wrong. You know, there was all those out there that said the Cowboys need to move on from Dak Prescott because they just can't do anything with them. I, I'm just wondering where those people are. There were all those people that all summer long said Dak Prescott's a turnover machine. He sucks. He's ass ass. You know, they, all the players that they said they would take like Jimmy G or Derek Carr or, or Kyler Murray. You know, it's, it's amazing because... Every year, there's a new flavor in your ear of the guy who Dak Prescott isn't as good as. But it's funny because Dak's still standing. Every year, like clockwork, it's always another guy that they say is so much better than Dak Prescott. And it seems like every time they come up with something like Dinkin and Duncan, yeah, okay, he's, he's, get, he's getting the ball down the field. Can't see the field. Okay, he's surveying the hell out of it. Uh, can't hit players deep. Okay. Can't throw in tight windows. All right, I hear you. But somehow, some way, he still looks good. And it's amazing because the Cowboys can win the games. But somehow with the media and guys like Dan Orlowski, they still lose. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. But that's okay. That's the life of being a Dallas Cowboy fan. You know we get a lot of shit. That's all we get is a lot of shit from people. But it's okay. It's okay. So, you guys think that I'm here just to praise Dak Prescott. But I'm going to say that Dak doesn't get his thing. You blame him too much when they lose. You blame him too much when he loses. But then... Well, no, I'm going to say you give him too much credit when he wins. They don't give him any credit when he wins because then when they win and look good, oh, well, it was garbage time, so it don't count. Like the Cowboys are the only team that ever have a blowout and it's garbage time or, that, that, you know, that the Cowboys were behind and chasing somebody, so it was garbage time, so it don't count. That's the kind of shit that they do. But if that was Josh Allen or... Uh, some of these other quarterbacks that did what the Cowboys did yesterday, they just, they, they'd be like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know how Tony Romo and those guys would be like, mm -hmm. they'd be, oh my God, they'd be just drooling all over. But I'm here to say, it's not Dak Prescott. It's not Dak Prescott. A couple of things have happened that are now making Dak Prescott the quarterback that he has the capabilities to be. One, we are playing inferior competition. I'm not going to dis dismute and say that we're playing the best teams in football and we're, we're doing what we're doing. But in football, you only play a few games against elite competition a season. You do. Now, we've got a stretch here where we're playing some of the teams that are allegedly the best teams in football or playoff-bound teams, Seattle Seahawks, although they got beat last night uh, in their division by San Francisco. 
We've got, of course, then the Eagles, which have the best record in football, but we went toe for toe, and we're a couple plays away from beating them in their house. We've got Buffalo Bills, the Jekyll and Hyde team that's also uh, in the playoff race, and we've got the Miami Dolphins, which have been this year's darling, although they haven't beaten anybody. But the thing that's happened with the Cowboys since the 49er game is the offensive line, which has not really gotten that much credit, has begun to gel. You know, I've, I've been one of those ones, and I have to admit when I'm wrong, that, you know, everybody said, move on from Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith, man, you got to get rid of that dude, got to get rid of that dude. Well, I got to tell you right now, the left side of the Cowboys line is getting really good. Now, I get it. We're, we're still facing some of the lesser teams right now. We'll see the next weeks going ahead. But those guys, when Tyron Smith is healthy, and it seems like all of a sudden he's gotten to a groove, and I hope I don't uh, jinx it, you know, that we have a medical malfunction. We don't say the I word anymore. It's a dirty word. Um, if that can continue with Tyron Smith being healthy, this team can go a long ways. Another thing that has helped this offense, and quietly, the last couple of weeks, Terrence Steele has been looking like some American steel. Not, not, not that Chinese steel. That Chinese steel is a little soft and it's a little brittle and, and it's, it's just not good steel, okay? If you want good, like, router bits and saw blades and stuff like that, you need some American steel. American-made steel. It's strong. And that's where Terrence Steele is becoming American steel again. And you're seeing him going downfield and lighting, jacking people up. You see him <coughs> hitting one guy <coughs> onto the next. You see him actually beginning to get into a groove now. And when you have that, that's where you see Tony Pollard now all of a sudden beginning to pick up. These things matter. The casual fan doesn't understand football and what the offensive line really does. The only time they think about the offensive line is if there's a false start, if there's a holding, and things like that. If they're doing their job, they're invisible. But if you really want to watch football and really understand it and, and think that, oh, anybody can be an offensive lineman, they could, all they got to do is stand in front of somebody, you don't know dick about football. There are so many subtleties of being able to get your head across the body and wheeling your hips around to basically wall off a player. You don't know what it's like to be a guard that's got to get between the wash to try and get to that second level to get to that linebacker. You don't know what it's like to try and get underneath a 350-pound man on the goal line. You don't understand what it's like. Oh, actually, you really don't understand what it's like to be a big man, a pulling guard going around the corner, and you see a quarterback. Oh, man, you're like, I'm going to light that dude up. Oh, man. And you launch him into next week. It's that offensive line that you have to give credit to. Because if you have an offensive line that was walling off and keeping the quarterback upright, not allowing them to get to the quarterback. And I want you to understand something here. I want you to understand something here. Think about this for a second. The Giants got nine sacks against the Commanders. I think we only got five yesterday. Think about that for a second. The Giants got like nine sacks against the Commanders and destroyed them. You know what they did against Dallas? They didn't do shit. Because that Dallas Cowboys offensive line is finally beginning to gel. Now, I know everybody's going to say, well, it was just the Giants. and all. I, I get that. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. They were a playoff team last year. They still have some good pass rushers like Thibodeau, who's one of the top sackers in the NFL on that defense. Like I said, they did damage to the commanders. The Cowboys neutralized them completely. And I will say that they did a damn good job against the Eagles a few weeks before. And if this trend continues, if Tyra Smith can stay healthy, because in the end, if you give a quarterback a clean pocket like they did yesterday for Dak Prescott to be able to survey the field to allow plays deep to develop, most good quarterbacks are going to have great games. They just are. 
And that's the difference of the Cowboys being able to blow somebody out than to end up having, you know, tip passes and having to throw tight windows and and because you're being hurried. The quarterback's not hurried, and he has a chance to look from read to read to read, especially with the receiving core that we have now. We have guys beyond C.D. Lamb and Tony Pollard who can do damage and hurt people. When you've got now Brandon Cooks out there, you know, and C.D., that's the best receiving group we've had since Amari Cooper and C.D. for that year. But you add into that now a Michael Gallup who's beginning to get back on track. You add into that a Jalen Tolbert who's a young guy who's hungry trying to get deep as well. Um, You add into that Brandon Cooks to the mix. So now you got CD who's having, you know, one of the best seasons that we've seen from a Cowboy receiver and probably will get the all-time record. And now you've got the Robin to go along with him with Brandon Cooks and all these guys. And now you're beginning to also see Schoonmaker, one of our rookies, start to step up and start to play a little bit and get into the mix. We'll get Peyton Hendershot back. Of course, Fergalicious is doing great things as well. So you're getting all these pieces and all these guys that it's too many guys to be able to try and stop. Now, you can say that the Cowboys still haven't proven anything, but you can look at the maturation of the offense and all of these guys that are out there that if Dak Prescott has time, if Dak Prescott has time, and you've got CD, you've got Brandon Cooks, you've got Ferg, and you've got Tony Pollard, and I've got four or five seconds to survey the field, One of those guys are going to be open. And that's a lot different than what we had early on the season. We had, just think think about this. Brandon Cooks, we were like, why did we get this guy? Why did we get this guy? He's not being used. And then it was, oh my God, don't throw it. Don't throw it to Michael Gallup. He's dropping everything. He can't get separation. You had just CD and a little bit of Ferg. And Tony, eh, kind of. But now... From where we are playing against San Francisco to where these guys are now, these guys are stepping up even better at the receiving court. And you have to look at the offensive line, which the first several weeks of the season was inconsistent because you had Taylor, uh, Ty- Tyler Smith miss the first two games. Then you had Tyron Smith miss game. You had Zach Martin miss time. You had Terrence Steele coming back from injury. You had Biotis missing time. The offensive line being consistent the last three or four weeks that they have actually played together as a group and getting their field together has been the difference of it. Now, mind you, mind you, I'm not going to take anything away from my quarterback because Dak Prescott is playing lights out because in the end, when you have great blocking and great receivers, I ain't succeeding out there because I don't have that arm and that vision and the ability to do that. You still have to be awful special to make that work. All right, good people. Um, we're going to see what we see. We might live stream this afternoon. Um, I don't know. I might just go ahead and do some work. The funny thing is, is I got up this morning and I said, I'm going to cook breakfast for everybody. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to take it easy today. And here I am out here now working on cutting some pieces to make some cabinets. I appreciate you guys. Peace.